so um, so I'll start and uh, so as you see here it's a very simple uh, system I call it information measuring automation system and uh, it's basically the combination of all the knowledge we learn from this specific course and uh, I'll, I'll show you like a little bit later. so the motivation is that um, when we do experiments in the rocks uh, rock mechanics lab especially our experiment with me we always do the experiment like change all the parameters manually on the computer which um, takes precise timing and uh, we need to stay there for like um, a long time for example half a day or even a day so sometimes it makes people boring and uh, hate the experiments so the motivation is that um, I want to build a very simple semi, semi or full automatic um, experimental system and will help improve the uh, experiences of experiments, doing experiments. And this uh, automatic system features, um, specifically this one features uh, automatic shutdown criteria, like uh, not A but multiple, so that you can like shut down automatically when some cases happen, so you don't, you don't need to worry about uh, the experiment too much. Um, I'll talk about that uh, in detail later. <clears throat> so the components of these apparatus, uh, uh, it's composed of two parts, one is hardware, uh, the other is software. So for the hardware part, I got a, uh, I'll pull out for this really quick. So I got a uh, low frame, as you see here, it's very, looks like a helicopter, but it's not. <laughs> and I guarantee it's not the most beautiful uh, low frame in the world, but it works. And, and as you can see here, it has a platform um, underneath, and uh, it has a 3D printed um, bar holder, which is the black part here. And it has a bar, which we're going to measure deformation from and it has a aluminum bracket which holds a very tiny servo motor and it's a wooden bar constructed from um, makeup bars or something, I, I don't know, but uh, it has a wooden bar, I call, it, I, I call it arm here and pulls two elastic strings and these two elastic strings as the bar rotates will pull this bar here and, and will measure deformation out of this wooden bar. So for the software part, I built a LabVIEW uh, program um, to record data um, and also control this servo motor uh, because um, for the automation purpose, we want the uh, uh, system run like automatically, not changing parameters manually in the computer. So the program can read a file that contains commands to the servo motor and then it can turn to certain degrees by itself. So let me show you the pictures here. So as you can see here, um, I already showed you, but maybe this picture is larger. So this is the bar for the, and there is a full bridge strain gauge um, configuration attached to the wooden bar here. Um, maybe I can pass this around so everybody can see. So, so here are the strain gauges. Later I'll show a bigger picture. And, uh, and this is this is the 3D printed barcode that I printed as one of the homeworks in this course. And uh, this is the servo motor and the wooden arm, which is mounted in a uh, bracket. So this is the wooden platform. It's really hard wood and really difficult to drill. And and this is a close look at the servo motor. So you can see the aluminum bracket. I I don't think it's used this way, but I figured it out. And uh, I, I put two wood pieces here and fold this together and hold, uh, hold this uh, servo motor using another bracket and try to drill, so try to drive some screws in it to fix it. And then <coughs> these four, uh, four holes are for the bar holder. So here is the close look at the full, uh, full bridge uh, strain gauge configuration. I don't want to go to too detail because everybody knows. 
and uh, it's just uh, four gauges aligned in this way. And we're going to pull on uh, this hole here um, in this direction. It can also be like reversed if we um, put the bar in, in, in the other the other direction. So, but in, in this kind of specific uh, display, I'll just show in one direction. <coughs> And these are the two Arduino boards, which controls the or drives the whole system. So these Arduino board, is, I, which I call servo motor controller, this uh, this Arduino board is right here, and it has a LED screen, LCD, I'm sorry, LCD screen, and uh, the screen can display two things. One is the voltage of the potentiometer, which is right there. It's a swipe bar potentiometer. And uh, it can also display the position of the servo motor uh, if you um, like, like the current position. So um, the potentiometer basically uh, is a voltage divider circuit. Everybody likes it, <laughs> probably. Um, and if you swipe it from left to right, the voltage measured from uh, the two ends of this potentiometer will vary from 0 to 4.95 4, 4 volts. And uh, the Arduino system, uh, which I coded, will convert this voltage to uh, a range of degrees from 0 to 100, uh, 180 degrees. And then this, posi uh, this position information will be sent to the servo motor, and the servo motor will turn accordingly. So, uh, and this, uh, this, this, this board can also read serial commands from the lab view program for the, um, and send certain rotation locate, uh, position commands to the servo motor. It will turn automatically that way. So, and, and this board here is basically a data acquisition board. So I got IMAC 100P amplifier, which I got free from this course. And, uh, and this is basically a uh, amplifier and a data loader. So it's actually here, nothing very special. But the uh, uh, gain is, uh, I think, 500. So I put a two, two, two minutes. No, two minutes. OK. And um, yeah, that's, that, that, that's the words. And uh, here is the program from Canon. So um, basically, what, what I want to do here is to um, show you an idea of a, a comprehensive, simple, uh, experimental um, setup. So in this big black uh, display here, you can see what's going on when you pull the, uh, uh, the bar. And also, um, there are two COM ports which corresponds to the uh, uh, servo controller and data logger. So you send commands to the servo controller through one COM port, and you uh, read data from another COM port. So uh, both read everything that's uh, serial port configuration, and also I want to record the data into a file. So I will something um, that, that 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 can record the position data to a text file. And also um, I got a timer here. So um, the, what the program does is like every um, so you can see here the execute execute interval. So like. Every five seconds, we will execute one line of commands in the command file, and the, the servo motor will turn accordingly. And uh, here you can see the command sent, and the lower limit, limit and upper limit is um, if the deformation I converted to micro strings, if the deformation is too large, it will automatically shut down everything. So, and uh, what else? Um, yeah, maybe I can just show you later on. And uh, <clears throat> this is the block diagram. It's, and uh, probably I'll show you this video. This video uh, shows how the uh, servo motor run in manual mode. So, so uh, as you can see, I, I was um, sliding the bar there, and the servo motor turns according to from hundred uh, from zero to hundred eighty degrees. And uh, the, the, the angle, uh, the position of the servo motor can be read on the LCD. There's a small issue about it, maybe somebody can ask me. And, and, uh, <coughs> and this is the automatic mode. 
So in this way, I'm sending a command through the computer, and I, I didn't touch the uh, swipe bar, but every five seconds, the server model will turn like 10 degrees by itself. And uh, when the timer runs out, it will shut down. <coughs> So, um, so these are the shutdown criteria. So um, um, the, the first one is if the deformation is too large, which I specified upper and lower limits. And also if the schedule time is, is exhausted. This happens when you uh, input, when you want the experiment to run for a certain time, when the time is exhausted, the system will shut down automatically. And also if the emergency stop button is pressed, and also, there's a, if, if there's any internal program error, the program will just shut down. And uh, limitations and expandability. A lot, a lot of limitations. It can only measure like one degree of freedom, just the bending. And um, maybe the load frame is too um, too simple <laughs> or something like that. But expand, expandability, I think, most from the software. Um, the software can be expanded uh, a lot, and uh, as you can see here, data acquisition and control program can be expanded to accommodate more complicated applications. Okay, and then do you have this slide, this slide, slide? Yeah, this okay, is great. Yeah, because we, we probably should. Bring okay. it. Yes. So, um, do I have time to do some real time? Um, why, why don't you do at least one? Yeah, quick. Can you yeah. grab it and, and show us one, sure. one thing while people are asking questions? Up for questions. For the help with questions, you clap. That was the end. That's good. Now he's going to show us a demo while also answering questions. So um, I will just show a very quick demo of two different modes, uh, which you already seen. You have already seen the video. Carrie, make a multitask. So I was just curious. I don't know. Not much by the by the arm. Yeah, like, can you like actually see it, or could you measure if you wanted to, just like calibrate the machine? Yeah, um, you can amplify to a certain degree, but uh, for now you can see the resolution is not too high. Mm -hmm. It's actually very low, but you can see the value change um, by putting two strings. One string doesn't work. <laughs> so I will just. Um, Other questions? It's like one or two micron, like oh. like, like micro string, so it's very small. But if you, if you use, use your hand to bend the thing, then you can actually observe it. So I will just run this. So now it's running, and uh, we're in manual mode now. So you can see the readings. I, I didn't do any filtering because I ran out of time. So you can see, um, actually, it's the upper limit is too low. So it stopped. So you can see now the readings are 471. So the upper limit is 470, so it stopped. But if I increase the upper limit to like 500, I don't think it will stop. So it will continuously run. And uh, if I swipe, uh, if I, so if I like slide this thing, it will turn. And you can see these here. Because it's a circular rotation and uh, it will has like this pattern. So, so this is the manual mode, and now I will show you the automatic mode. So by by doing that, um, I'm going to click one script, and the target time I will set it for example 30 seconds, and I'm going to let the time. So now you can see this do do the do the thing so like every five seconds and after thirty seconds it will just shut down. So now it's like fifteen seconds, maybe fifteen more seconds. So Jenny, what was the hardest part? The hardest part? Um, the hardest part I think could probably be. So, 
Um, all the hard all the hard work part doesn't take too long, um, but uh, maybe programming is the hardest part. And uh, I think uh, yeah. So now I stop. Yeah, that's it. Awesome. Great.